Welcome back to Mr. Ramsey's Can Fix It. Today we're going to be replacing a GE micro hood to an Amana. Uh, here we're looking at the two screws on top that's holding it up. Um, obviously we take the power off and I'm showing uh, the I took the tape off the vent so we can take it down here. Um, Make sure you cover your stove because um, when you drill your new holes, you're going to have dust fall on top of the stove. So I use a drop cloth here to uh, cover the stove. And also if it fell, or falls, accidentally falls, it doesn't scratch it or or break something. So I like to put a drop cloth on the, 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 stop, the stove or the cooktop or in the surface that, that I'm working on. Um, I'm taking the two screws off to let uh, the micro hood come loose from the top. Um, so it'll come down here in just a second as soon as I'm done taking this screw off. There it is. And then I'll come down and you can do this yourself or you can have another person help you out and bring it down but um when you're a professional you, you one person can handle it it's always easier when you have two people um but you tilt it at an angle because there's a bracket at the bottom and it's holding it so it wasn't that heavy so i could lift it myself that scrawny little guy uh, and then there's a bracket um, that holds the microwave up at the bottom. Um, the, this one, this the new brackets are only on the bottom, but um, so I'm going to use the same screws here. So I, there's four screws holding this, the old bracket, so I'm taking those off. Uh, they were, whoever did the tile job here actually did a good job because they tiled all the way up. So there's no unevenness of the backing. Um, for the new microwave um, so my hats off to where we tile this place for the back splash on that stove I'm gonna show um, the, um, the back plate coming out um, this is uh, an Amana micro hood um, it's not that expensive there were it was about $200 um, so there wasn't nothing fancy about this. Uh, it's just a replacement that needed to get done uh, here. Uh, so we're getting the micro hood out and um, getting the manuals out because there's templates that come in a manual uh, that goes on the wall and then above where the screws are are for the power cord and the two bolts that hold the the micro hood on top that's the plate there that's going to hold the microwave at the bottom we're just uh taking everything out out of the packaging that's what i'm looking for the manuals that has my templates that i need So I'm going to show how um, the templates go on and where do you need a drill. Uh, here we got the back plate template, and that's what you're looking at. And then this is the top one. Follow the arrows and it's pretty simple. This took about 30, about 30 minutes to, from taking it down to put the new one up. When you have the perfect tools, when you have the right tools, the job will go faster. So keep that in mind. Um, I grabbed a Sharpie and my knife, I cut the holes where I was um, looking to see where the, where the power cord was because I wanted to find the stud. So 
I can't tap on the wall and find where the stud was. So I was looking where the power plug was at for the stove. So I can drill right where the stud was. This is the back plate uh, template. And so I'm gonna mark the bottom where I wanna need to drill the holes. I know you can't see it because I'm blocking it. So I do apologize. My cameraman was sitting on uh, my countertop. He could not move. He was stuck sitting there. So I cut the, the, the little hole on the paper with a knife and then I come back with the Sharpie and mark it with a Sharpie. And um, I think I use a 3 16 um, stone drill bit first to drill that out. Then I, then I decided, uh, well, let's do the top one now. So get all the templates put in and then we'll do all the drilling at once. I could have done it one template first and then the other template, but I figured I'm gonna have the drills going. I might as well do them all at the same time. So I'm trying to match up the top uh, make sure the gaps are even on each end so the microwave is not leaning to, over too much on one side and not enough on the other. This, thank God I had a, a second person here holding it because I was that top one was a hard, I was having a hard time doing it myself. So my buddy there was helping me out. Don't forget to like and subscribe at the bottom if you like what you see. Um, and, and if you wanna see more, more stuff being fixed or replaced, you're in the right place to watch. Uh, Cause we do, we do it all. We just, one day is different than the other. Nothing's the same. We don't do this. So I have a lot of tools just because the variety of knowledge that, that, I, that I've acquired over the years on how to do stuff. And I'm just sharing this with you guys and showing you the journey that we're on. And I'm glad to be part of it with you guys. So I have a little little basket there with um, all kinds of drill bits, metal, uh, stone, wood. So I have them all there. Uh, I used a um, 3 8 for the two bolts on that um, top head on the top portion. It says 3 8 bit. And then for the power cord, I used a inch and a quarter. I think the paper uh, asked for an inch and a half, but I didn't have inch and a half, so biggest one I had was an inch and a quarter so I used that one and it seemed to do the job just fine. They were just asking for extra room some power cords are bigger than others so you saw all that dust coming down that's when that drop cloth makes life easier when to clean up when you're done. You just fold it up and take it outside and shake it and then you're done you don't have to sit there and vacuum or sweep or perfect the cleaning on the 
of the job site, it's already done for you with the drop cloth. I learned that from a good old friend of mine. We use drop cloths for everything. So, the screws that I'm trying to measure are for the back plate to hold that bracket that what holds the microwave on the back side. So I'm trying to match the drill bit so I don't make the hole too big or too small, just the right hole, the right size, I'm sorry. And then I already have it marked with the Sharpie. Then I'm just trying to drill it, but the drill bit was kind of dull, so it kept sliding everywhere. So you're gonna see me here change my tactic. I grabbed that smaller bit, brand new, with my other drill. And then I pre-drilled it with a smaller hole and then I came with the right size drill bit and drilled it. It, it wasn't sliding everywhere. Cam camera man fell asleep. Those are the old holes that you're looking at from the old bracket. I had too many stuff out, so I had to put some stuff away because it was just... Couldn't find the right stuff that I needed. There's a smaller drill bit. It was brand new so it would cut through stone really fast. And then I was also looking for the stud when I was doing this. So once I figure out where the stud was, I was gonna measure 16 inches from center basically, so 16 inches would have been my other stud. So that's what I'm measuring here. Marking what 16 inches was. So when I put the plate up, I could get stud the studs instead of being on the drywall and the, and the tile work. Sometimes you have no option, but you have to do it like that with no studs. But if you can grab one stud, that'll give enough support for the mic to hold the microwave up. So we're checking for the holes to match with my Sharpie. And then we're gonna check for leveling also. That's a big part. Um, you don't want your microwave going in cricket, so. You'll see me grabbing the level here pretty quick to make sure that we're level. We're obviously blocking my camera, man. So he was trying his best with what he got.
towards the level. Making sure we're level. I put four screws on this plate just to give it that extra strength to hold up. cameraman probably fell asleep there he is he's refocusing <laughs> once this plate is up um pretty much put the new microwave in uh, if you notice this is a different plate than the old one the old one had the horseshoe look uh, shape these new one new microwaves nowadays are getting cheap on uh, material They're trying to cut cost somewhere so they just came up with just the bottom one so making room here to get the new microwave um, also the the venting we were looking at um, so that's what we're prepping here we're prepping the vent the micro hood for the vent circulation so our vent circulates through the top so we had to cut the little plates where the vent comes out and then we also had to move the motor so what I'm showing here is how to cut the how to cut the plate and we have to move the fan the motor fan up so there's two the screws that holding it and it has arrows and it says blower motor and then has arrows on it I don't know if you guys can, you guys can see that on the video uh, so those are the two screws holding the motor in place so we had to take those screws out so we can move the motor and then I put the screws back in to hold the motor in place and then while I'm doing that um, my buddy there is cutting the plates uh, so the motor could blow out up into the to the vent so he's just using a pair of nipix uh, to get to those plates and he, they're already they're pretty simple to cut doesn't take very long to do it Okay, now I'm putting the screws back in place to hold the motor. I was impressed that we were able to knock this out in actually 30 minutes. It literally took us 30 minutes from the point of taking it off to prepping it and to putting it back on. That's pretty good timing. And then, so now it takes two screws to put that little plate back down. One on each end. And the plate. And then I have uh, tape there that we're gonna put tape around the edges when we put the top plate on. 
So this plate here goes a certain way. So I, I was making sure that it was opening the right direction and then I realized I had it the wrong way. So that's why I flipped it around. And that little top plate has two screws. Two screws hold it down. And then after I put those two screws, um, I'm gonna tape it around just to hold it down also and then to prevent any ex uh, access of air anywhere else. I want the air concentrating going out just on, on those ports. So you'll see me taping all around any cracks that I see and on that top plate just to concentrate the blowing of the air. This is the aluminum tape. Um, it's pretty strong, but I like it because it's all used for ducking. This is what they use the the this type of pa uh, tape. It's not your average duct tape. You can use duct tape also, but yeah, duct tape. But it's a little bit thicker. This is thinner and it does the same. It has the same strong hold uh, and on the, an adhesive side. ventilations the motor has to be vented back here so he takes these off but ours is going to vent to the top but these vent portals here are meant to take off so uh, of I'm explaining here of the back if you had a the motor or the ventilation going out through the back you take the back plates off the versus the top ones Oh, I'm getting the screws ready for installation. I'm picking them out, the ones that I need for the top. Because they have special screws for the wall, drywall, and then the top. And the ones that I wanted were with the bigger head so I can slide the washers in and help it hold it up from the cabinet, from the top cabinet. And then you slide the bottom at an angle and then it hooks up to the bottom of the, the microwave. So that's what I'm explaining here. Let me get a side view. These tabs is what holds your microwave up. So if you want to get those on first, on to these. So there's one here and then one on the other side over there. So that's what we're trying to do. So we're going to go at an angle. Put the microwave up.
I always start to screw them by hand and then I use a drill. That way I'm not stripping the threads. So make that a good practice. It'll go a long ways. Tighten up the top screws there and here. You can see that it's level. You also check for gaps on this end. There's no gap on that side. And on this no end, gap on that tight, side. As you can see. Also, the clips I was talking about. There it is. There's clip one and there's clip two. And it's on there. That's pretty much it. And then we're going to put finishing. Taking the tape off, we're going to tape the top vent. And put the tray in there. And here I'm just taping the front and the top vent from having any excess air coming out into that cabinet. So it's all concentrated going through the vent only, not into the cabinet. Otherwise it would be really nasty and greasy over time. And we don't want that happening. So this takes a little bit of time when I'm just taping away. That's all it is. I appreciate for those who stayed this far watching it. Um, I hope you guys like what you see here and there will be more fix it videos on all kinds of stuff. Stay tuned on Mr. Ramses Can Fix It. There's, I'm out there every day, so we're doing new things. And I know I'm only putting one video out, but there will be different stuff being coming out on the channel. I hope you guys are learning something um, because this is what it's all about, helping each other out and teach each other how to do things and do things for yourself if you can. And if you can't, okay. we're here to help. <laughs> I'm just changing the clock here. Basically, I'm checking for any air that if I feel any air coming out so I can seal it up that there's no air. So I'm making sure that the light works, the vent. Um, Pretty simple install. We'll see you on the next door run.